First, I just want to put in perspective what I'm doing here. Uh, we're talking about the limit as x approaches 5, limit of x squared minus 25, and supposedly that limit is, um, no, the limit of x squared as x approaches 5, and supposedly that limit equals 25, which of course it does. So here's this, here's x squared, and here's our point. That's 5 comma 25, so let me just draw that down, draw this over. So here's 25 on the y, and here's uh, 5 on the x. Now what they're going to do is they're going to give us some kind of a tolerance. I'll draw it really, really big as an exaggeration, so it'll be like this, say. But in reality, the tolerance that we're going to get is going to be really, really tiny. It's going to be real close to this value here. But for sake of example, it's real, it's real big here. So the tolerance that they give us is going to be epsilon. And the challenge is that we have to come up with a range of x values down here. Uh, maybe here and here. And this distance is on both sides, both of these distances, will be delta. Now, the challenge is to find a delta or a region in here that's so small such that whenever we pick x values inside of it and run those x values through the function, the outputs will always be within epsilon units of 25. So if we, as long as we pick any numbers inside, run them through the function, the outputs are guaranteed to be sufficiently close to 25, or at least closer uh, than epsilon states they should be. So, the first part says that show that um, absolute x squared minus 25 is less than 11 times uh, absolute x minus 5. If uh, x is between 4 and 6. So in other words, they want us to show that the distance that x squared will be from 25 will be less than 11 times the distance x is from 5. I'll just bring this back for a sec. They want us to show that the distance between x squared and 25. So, in other words, the distance that the output value is from this number, they want you to show that that is less than 11 times the distance that x is from 5. So that um, if the distance x is from 5 is, say, 1, right, times 11, then that means that the distance between x squared and 25 is going to be less than 11. So let's see, uh, how can we deduce this from this? They give you a hint. Um, let's see, if x is between 4 and 6, if I add 5 to both to uh, all three pieces of, the, of this, then I have 9 is less than x plus 5 uh, is less than 11. And, ooh, and when I take absolute value, that means that absolute x plus 5 will be less than 11. Uh, and so, if 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 absolute x plus 5 is less than 11, and I multiply both sides of this inequality by absolute x minus 5, well, I get, let me draw it over here, I get absolute x minus 5 times x plus 5 is less than 11 times x minus 5, a absolute x minus 5. And lo and behold, this is equivalent to this. And show, and, and so we've shown that if x is inside of this of this range, we can add five, take absolute value, come up with this. All right, so this implies this. And if this is true, we can multiply both sides by x absolute x minus five and come up with this, uh, which is the equivalent of what it was that we wanted to show. Part B wants us to find a delta such 
such that um, absolute x squared minus 25 will be less than 1 1,000th um, whenever delta uh, is greater than absolute x minus 5. Whenever absolute x minus 5 is less than delta. Okay, so if we start out with, we're going to let absolute x minus 5 be less than delta. Um, we know that uh, if we take this and we multiply both sides by 11, we'll get 11 absolute x minus 5 is less than 11 delta. But we also know that if if x is between 4 and 5, if we restrict our attention to values of x between 4 and 5, then, then as was shown from part A, it must be the case that absolute x plus 5 is less than 11. And so under that condition, that means that this expression, if we have, if x plus 5 is less than 11, then if we multiply both sides of this by absolute x minus 5, we get something that is less than 11 times x minus 5, which we could put on the other end of this inequality here and come up with what we want. So 5 plus x, uh, uh, 5 minus x minus 5. Okay, so what did we just figure out? We, we figured out that under a specially chosen value of delta, if we choose it small enough, such that, right, like you gotta remember, here's the x-axis, here's 5, here's 4, here's 6. We're only going to pick values of x that are inside here, which means that delta is a number that's, that's small. Delta is a small number. And if that's the case we showed in part A, if x is inside here, then absolute x plus 5 is less than 11. So if we start out with this assumption, multiply both sides by 11, we get this, and then on this we can tack this onto the, onto the other side of this inequality. Now what, how does this help us? Well, we can choose delta as small as we like. Now ultimately we only want this, which is absolute x squared minus 25, to be less than 1 1,000th. So, to make it less than 1 1,000th, all we have to do is let delta equal 1 over 11,000. And then watch how this goes. If delta is equal to 1 over 11,000, then that means that absolute x minus 5 must be less than 1 over 11,000. So we take that inequality and we multiply by 11 and we get 11 times absolute x minus 5 is less than 1 1 thousandth. And then we use um, the answer from part A. Let me see if I can, I don't know if this is zoomed in enough or not. We'll, we'll use our answer from part A which said that if x is chosen inside here that absolute x plus 5 must be less than 11. And therefore, we could put the inequality on this side, and that will mean that 11 times this is less than absolute x plus 5 times that. And that completes part B, because we show that if delta is equal to 1 11 thousandth, then we, then we can, we can, then we get this to start out from which we can gather the truth of this inequality here together with the step uh, together with the answer from part a now the third one the third part of this is what constitutes um, an act, uh, more of an actual proof they want to it says to give a rigorous proof uh, show that can you see this show that x squared minus 25 absolute is less than epsilon whenever uh, delta, uh, no, whenever absolute x minus 5 is less than delta. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same, we're pretty much going to use the, the same method that we did in, in part B. Um, we, um, 
we said that absolute x minus 5 is less than delta and if we multiply both sides of this by 11 we get absolute x minus 5 is less than 11 delta uh, but we also said that if once again if x is between 4 and 5 then that means that absolute x plus 5 is less than 11 and so I can extend the inequality over here and get absolute x plus 5 x minus 5 which is equal to absolute x squared minus 25 and so we got this thing here now last time we wanted this to be equal to 1 1000th but this time we we're going to make it equal to just epsilon right any epsilon any number that you know any arbitrarily small tolerance that we are given so in part b it happened to be 1 1000th and this one it's just going to be regular epsilon so to finish off the uh, proof here all we have to do is say let delta equal um, epsilon over 11 which is less than or equal to 1 or just strictly less, th less than 1 then we have x minus 5 the distance from x to 5 will be less than epsilon over 11 we multiply both sides by 11 and that gives us 11 absolute x minus 5 is less than epsilon but once again, under uh, the assumption from part A, if A of x is between 4 and 5, then absolute x plus 5 is guaranteed to be less than 11. So we can extend the inequality over here and say absolute x plus 5, absolute x minus 5, which is equal to absolute x squared minus 25, is less than 11 times this, which is guaranteed to be less than epsilon. So just to go back through these steps again, we figured out that um, the delta that we needed was 1 11th of the tolerance that they gave us. Because of that rule that we worked out in, in part A, it would, the entire proof really hinges on this. If we didn't have this, uh, I really don't know what we would do. But all we got to do is say, okay, let delta be that number, and um, so then let x minus 5 be less than that number. And then just do algebra multiplied by 11, gets you the truth of this. And then given our fact, it's going to give us the truth of this and allow us to attach the inequality, thus making the expression that we wanted less than epsilon, and that completes the proof.